Hello and welcome to Rust Build School. While thinking about fixes for the vending machine bunker, I remembered that drop boxes were a thing. Drop boxes let you put items straight through a wall, which can lead to a pretty interesting bunker. This design used to be used a lot in the past, but kind of died off, so I wanted to take a look at it and see why this was or if it's still any good. The answer is, it's still really good. It is 15 rockets on any side in order to access the shell as it's fully armored with ceilings and walls on all sides, and the way you access the bunker is simply through a drop box facing inward and outward from the bunker. So you submit items into the drop box, and then once you've submitted all of the items you want to submit or you've filled the drop box, you have to F1 kill, which will put you to spawn inside the bag here. You can then jump across, access this drop box, and then you can transfer the loot into the small or big boxes in here. This features two large boxes, four small boxes, and four barbecues. This is the most efficient because if these are large boxes here, you cannot access this drop box here. In order to send items out of the base, you just have to grab all of your rockets, go to your drop box, and submit them out. This can be a little bit of a time tedious process, but the storage vault is kind of undefeatable in the sense that it is a solid wall on all sides no matter what you do. The one weakness and the most important thing to keep in mind is that drop boxes only have 100 HP. So if one single rocket hits this armored wall, both drop boxes will instantly break, which seals the bunker. You can no longer get loot in or out. In order to combat this, you should always keep at least two drop boxes inside the bunker, because that will allow you to place a drop box to get in and to get out. That way you can still get your loot in and out no matter what's going on. If you lose that stash of drop boxes inside, the bunker is completely useless as you would have to raid into it to get your loot back. Let's go ahead and take a look at design number one. So behind the wall with the two drop boxes, you have four barbecues, four small boxes, two large boxes, and a sleeping bag. In order to build this design, you just need to seal off one foundation with four walls and a ceiling, then place a salvage shelf as far back as you can against the back wall. Once you've got straight, place it down. Then you need to place two large boxes on it as far back as you possibly can. Get them lined up. Then place in three barbecues on the second shelf. Then a small box underneath each of those. Then you want to go ahead and place your sleeping bag into one of the corners. In the opposite side, place a barbecue and a small box. Then grab your drop box and place it above your sleeping bag up in the corner as tight as you can. That'll be your input into the bunker. Then you need to F1 kill and spawn outside of the bunker and place in the output from the bunker. So now you have your input and output and the bunker is fully completed. Design number two is a TC design with two large boxes and two small boxes worth of storage and the sleeping bag. In order to build this design, you just need to seal off the foundation with four walls and a ceiling. Then place a TC into the corner as tight as you can. Snug a sleeping roll against the TC in the wall. Place a large box in front of the TC as straight as you can with the wall. Then place a small barbecue in the opposite corner with a small box underneath it. Place a large box in front of it between the other large box. Then go ahead and place a drop box on top of this large box, but be sure to sink it into the large box like that, so that way you can get another one right above it. After that, that is the TC core finished. You've got your sleeping bag, two boxes, and two small boxes, as well as the drop box leading out. Well, the input in, actually. Now we're going to do the output drop box right on top of that, and there we go. That is the second design finished for TC. A final thought I had is if for some weird reason you really wanted to hide this loot room, you could use explosives or a jackhammer. Um, the jackhammer would be really inefficient, but if you could explode these um, drop boxes, you would completely seal off the fact that this is a bunker and this would just look like honeycomb to a player. So that is potentially something to take advantage of if you store drop boxes inside the core here. You could theoretically break these and they could not tell this was a bunker from the outside. There'd be no way of telling that. I hope you guys like this design and or find it useful. So with that, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.